So you want to rescape your tank, do you? What do you think the first step is? So this week is gonna be a little bit of a vlog style. I'm not gonna be putting my hands into the tank this week. I print block by day. So I have, I've got printing ink all over my hands. So I've had this tank set up like this for a while. Now I'm not, and by a while I mean, it's probably been a couple of months. It was definitely during lockdown that I picked up this uh, manzanita wood and added it and I managed to get some more, some more plants. It was all done remotely, so I wasn't able to pick out the wood myself, but I made it work. I feel like when I first got my tanks, I was like all gung-ho, get your hands wet, you know, get in there. And of course you're also like thinking that you're going to create this beautiful aquascape. So you start with some plants and your rocks and before you know it, you're like, you sit back and you're like, mm, mm, mm. it looks like hot garbage. Then you try again, but you've already got fish in there. So I feel like my hands were like in the tank too much and I, that's definitely one of the things that I would say you have to be really careful of because I know that especially in those early days when, when I was learning a lot of mistakes were made and some little fishies totally got hurt in the process too while I was vacuuming while I was moving stuff around uh, this is when when the, the poor little critters I mean it's stressful imagine we just have this giant <laughs> hand coming into our house to like move our furniture around I'm not sure I'm going to remove the fish their stress levels lasts for a really long time after having been netted. So all of these things are stressful. Now, of course, coming in and shaking down their house and completely redesigning it is also going to be stressful. So I want to, I want to definitely like take my time with it and do it in a way that is going to be the least invasive to the fish. And I think the best way to go about that is to make sure you have a plan. I think for us fish keepers, the biggest tip is to be patient and take your time. I like this scape, but I feel like it's definitely missing something. And the inhabitants of this tank at the moment are just some cardinal tetras and my little catfish. And both of them um, are in the wild found in the Rio Negro. So that, if I wanted to make a biotope tank, um, there would definitely be darker water. I do have botanicals in there right now, but it's not, like, if it's tinting the water, it's not in any visible way. So it would be something that I'm, I would have to do either add way more. I have experimented in the past with adding tea to get the darker darker colored water but I'm what I'm thinking at this point is I want to add some more stones stones have just been collected locally or in my travels and I know I have a whole bunch more downstairs so I'm probably gonna go downstairs right now and see what we have and see how I can change this scape because I feel like it's looking pretty wild. There's a lot of, I definitely was aiming for the island look, but I, that's not what I ended up with because there's plants all in the back. And so I have a little collection of stones and more in this box. I'll just have to go through them. I brought this one home last week last week one of these times that we went to the beach and it is a huge huge stone of course i haven't actually cleaned it where the rest of them have been cleaned it's beautiful it totally goes with the color of stones that i have in that tank already but i'm not sure if that's too big so i'll have to go through maybe wash all these again because they've been sitting down here for a while um and I don't know, come up with some kind of a plan. I think that we all have this sort of vision of you know what we're happy to look at and it really is so subjective to our own personal tastes. 
And within those personal tastes, there's also a whole learning curve that happens. So other than having a plan kind of drawn out, um, picking the stones I want to put in there, there's not much else that I'm going to do this week. I, like I said, there's been a lot of print blocking happening uh, this week and my hands have been, you know, I have some of this stuff just doesn't come off. Like even though it's water-based ink, it ends up being stuck to my hands and I really want to be careful with how I treat these tanks. One thing that is very important when you are putting your hands in the tanks is to make sure that they are clean and don't have any contaminants on your hands, even the soap that you use. So you want to wash your hands, um, yes, with soap, but then also just like rinse them for quite a long time with just hot, hot water so that you don't have any soap residue on your hands, especially if you have antibacterial soap, which nowadays everything seems to have antibacterial properties in it because we're paranoid. So I'll leave it be for this week. Have my plan, sit and think about it. Have a little sit and think about it. Uh, I've definitely been looking at different aquascapers and you know, gaining some inspiration. And hopefully next week, I'll be able to go in there and uh, move stuff around, replant some things, and come up with a whole new scape that I can show you. Until then, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click that little bell notification so you know when I post. This is what they do when we get too close. They're like, get us out of here. Also, can we just marvel at this. Look at the roots that I have here. Ding, ding on the floating plants. I tried my hardest. I literally was like, I'm gonna get rid. I'm gonna tackle duckweed. Good luck. There's no way. All of my tanks have duckweed in them. I've got floating plants that I had intentionally put in there which is the water lettuce, the dwarf water lettuce. But then the duckweed, honestly, it was like one teeny, tiny little plant that I that had come in with stuff and I was like, it's one tiny little leaf. What's one tiny little leaf gonna do? You can see it stuck in the roots here too. Uh, and that one tiny little leaf is completely taken over everything. And last week I tried my darndest to actually separate and try and remove as much of this duckweed as I could and I think it's completely futile. It's all in this tank. We've got it in the shrimp tank. Here's actually, okay, so here's why I'm thinking of changing. That was also overgrown and a bit crazy, but it's exactly what the shrimp like and need. Um, while this tank is teeny tiny, but I love how the stones really make it look like it's its own little universe. Like it really looks like a, a landscape. And I think it's because the stones have such a prominent uh, sitting in the tank, whereas in my other tank. 